Kiora Marky here. So this episode is sponsored by Mitre 10 DIY. No, it's not actually. It, it should be though, because I'm kind of displaying their logo, but only for reasons of convenience. So for those of you who watched the previous video, where I said I was in an, an unsalubrious location, I'm now in a slightly more unsalubrious location because I've been kicked out. I was in a little kind of vestibule area of Mitre 10, which they're now shutting. So I'm now outside of Mitre 10. The Mitre 10, for those of you uh, not from the uh, sunny world of New Zealand, is a DIY store. Uh, where my wife is busy uh, shopping for things and I have absented myself and I'm doing a spontaneous vlog. So there we go. So this is the second one I've done from Mitre 10 and I get no sponsorship or financial repayment from them whatsoever. I won't even get a discount on whatever it is my wife buys. So I want to talk today about a concept that comes from addiction recovery that can apply to any form of recovery for anything. Uh, but I'm kind of talking about this kind of psychological conditions really. So things like alcoholism, um, depression, anxiety, any form of addiction, and of course, retroactive jealousy, okay? You wanna get well, what are the kind of things you need to do to get well? One of them is something that's called sticking with the winners. Okay, stick with the winners. So this is a phrase that's sometimes used in 12-step recovery and where I've seen it the most is in the, uh, the publications of an organisation called Hazelden. So Hazelden, for those of you who don't know, is a, I love Hazelden. They're a, um, a big organisation. They've got their fingers in lots of pies, but, uh, but their, their interest is in recovery, mainly from addiction. And they publish loads of books and lots of literature and share lots of wisdom. And they really do have some really good, practical, simple wisdom uh, contained within their literature. Uh, they used to do this thing where they would send you a page from one of their books uh, by email every day and I've tried to see if I can log back onto it but I've not been able to find it but I used to get uh, a little word of wisdom uh, sort of emailed to me every day from Hazelden I used to use it with clients so one of the things they talk about and I think other people have talked about this as well is this concept stick with the winners what does it mean okay well you've probably kind of come across the the concept I don't know if it's you know true and if it's been validated or proven that you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with okay which is kind of can be quite a scary kind of concept so an exercise for you to do now if you feel so inclined I'll let I've moved so I've got a kind of like spiritual halo coming from behind me which is kind of quite good <laughs> mainly so I can lean on something so <clears throat> The five people that you spend the most time with. The theory is that you are the sum of those five people, which is interesting. So a little exercise for you to do. Pause the video. Well, don't pause the video yet because I haven't told you the exercise. <laughs> Listen to the exercise, then pause the video. Then unpause the video when you've done the exercise, obviously. So the first part is list the five people that you spend the most time with at the moment. And it might be a surprise, it might not be who you think it, you know, you might think it's people that you, the people that you love the most in your life. Uh, it might actually be a bus driver or a bartender <laughs> that you spend more time with. Often it's colleagues, isn't it? Because you spend lots of time at work. So think about who you spend the most time with, five people, and then write down positive qualities of those five people and the negative qualities of those five people. Or well, not necessarily negative qualities, but maybe something that they struggle with something that's not working so well in their life so maybe uh, uh, it's not a negative quality is it but if somebody's got a, a chronic illness or if somebody's uh, very poor or if somebody's um, you know suffering with um, you know financial you know maybe like a divorce or something like that so so the downsides of their lives are the negative qualities the upsides of their life are the positive qualities let's say so do that exercise hold on to that uh and then come back when you've done it okay so i don't know whether that was kind of you know any surprises in there but often people in recovery choose not to stick with the winners and by by winners what i mean is people who are making the kind of recovery that you would like to make okay uh, so you might say well how could I meet these people you know so for example if if you suffer with uh, addiction and go to 12-step recovery group or any other form of recovery group there'll be some people there who are still struggling and there'll be some people there who have done really well in recovery and they're only sort of mainly main reason for turning up is to help other people they're the winners 
okay? But they're only the winners if they're, if they're living the kind of recovery that you think is good, okay? If they're, if they're living kind of um, what, what we sometimes call a white knuckle recovery, um, and they're living the kind of lifestyle that really doesn't feel right to you, they're not winners, okay? So a winner is somebody that's sustained recovery, uh, is living a happy, fulfilled life in a kind of similar way to the way that you would like to live your life with your kind of values. So, for example, sometimes people kind of um, follow, you know, um, they cross addict. So somebody might be in recovery from alcohol, but they're spending, you know, ridiculous amounts of time in the gym, okay? That's not true recovery in my book. I would challenge that. So they're not people to call winners. But the winners are the kind of people who live in a balanced life, the kind of lifestyle that you would like to lead. So the simple message in this is hang out with them, talk to them, learn from them, you know, befriend them. Okay, why don't people, why, why isn't this obvious, Marky? You know, surely people are going to do this anyway. Well, they don't actually. The, the opposite is more commonly true because I think uh, we like sympathy. Uh, we uh, we like to have kindred spirits, so sometimes you know we latch on to people that are uh, in similar situation to us or worse, which gives us a <laughs> may give us a kind of a, a sense of superiority that even though we might not admit to it. So hang out with the people that are doing well. If you hang out with the people that aren't doing so well, then you might benefit from that camaraderie. Um, from that sympathy, from that understanding, from that shared shared misery, but neither of you are going to necessarily be moving on. You might be holding, you know, holding each other back. So sticking with them, and it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Really, you know, if if you, because recovery is a big a big deal. It's a big thing to achieve. Now, if you, you know, if you're looking at other ambitious goals in your life, if you're looking at uh, starting up a business in a particular field then you might be associating and talking to and seeking the advice of people who are successful in that business if you for example I often use this example wanted to climb Mount Everest then you would be better off kind of talking to people who have climbed Mount Everest and have you know survived with all their limbs and their fingers and toes intact <laughs> who can give you some guidance you know and inspire you and share, share information with you or maybe go up there with you Okay, so this is the thing to do with recovery. So, uh, so thinking about kind of, uh, if we use the, uh, an example from retroactive jealousy, which uh, is one of the things that I work with, those of you that, aren't, that don't follow me for the retroactive jealousy side of things. Uh, so there's a couple of uh, internet fora, I'm very uh, stickler for correct Latin uh, plurals, so I don't say forums. So a fora is the plural of forum. And there are two fora <laughs> that are popular on the internet. There might be more that I'm not. I've, I run a third one, which is just for partners, by the way. And there's other videos on that if you want to find out more or email me. <clears throat> and a lot of, you know, particularly what people want to do when they first get onto those fora is to, to tell their story, to talk about what's really bugging them and to find out if it's bugging anybody else. <laughs> and then that gives them immediate comfort. And, and that's kind of fine, but if you stay in that place, you won't get well, okay? So what you really want to do if you're using those fora is find the people on there who have successfully recovered. And the easiest way to do that is to put a post on there saying, who has successfully recovered? <laughs> and people will respond because more and more people are recovering every day. And then you can chat to them and seek their guidance, seek their support, seek their camaraderie. So stick with the winners. Simple concept in a way it kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of intuitive. Shouldn't really need saying from a strange location outside a DIY shop with weird light and shaky camera. But I think it does. You know, so who do you want to be? You know, you are the some of the five people you spend all that time with. Do you want to be with people who are sympathetic but miserable? Or do you want to be with, you know, people who are people that you like and people that maybe share the same values, but people who are in recovery, people who are uh, leading a fulfilled and happy life? Because that's what I want for you. I want you to have a happy and fulfilled life. Rangi Mario.